Minasan konnichiwa, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. This video is a huge beauty product empties. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and channel it Shatte kudasai. So, it has been a very, very long time since I've done an empties video, but I kind of wanted to do them um, bi-annually. I'm pretty sure that's the word I'm looking for, like twice a year. I wanted this video to kind of be like a contents page for you guys, if you will, where I give a very brief, unscripted opinion of the product and if it sounds like something that you are interested in you can follow the links in the description where I will link videos where I have talked about the products in depth and given a proper review. The reason for that is because I have this many products to get through in this video. Obviously quite a number of skincare products. I also do have some makeup in there as well. Enough blabbering on, let's get right into this mess. To make it easier, I am going to go through the products in order that you would use them. So first we're going to start off with the first step or oil-based cleansers. I have three. It looks like I have three. So first, the Biore Perfect Oil Makeup Remover. Looking at this bottle now, um, it is absolutely filthy because I actually get this one in my shower because it is the most easiest oil cleanser to use in the shower. If you have tried to use oil cleansers when your hands and face are wet, you probably experienced it not working properly or it um, becoming a weird texture or glugging up. This one does not. So it's really, really handy when I'm super lazy and I don't want to cleanse before hopping in the shower. I just want to do it all in the shower. I use this one and it removes everything perfectly, even in the kind of humid, wet environment of the shower. This one is definitely an OG to my channel. I have talked about for years and years at this point and it is still my number one most repurchased oil cleanser. Next, the Cow Brand Cleansing Milk. I also have mentioned this one many, many times. It is such a nice additive free milk cleanser. So on the days where you're not wearing a lot of makeup or if you have really dry skin and you don't want anything really stripping, this one is perfect since it is um, alcohol, fragrance free and all of that. So really good for sensitive dry skin. And then the last oil cleanser we've got is the Hamish All Clean Balm. I know this one is a holy grail for many, many people and it is a great balm cleanser. It is often very affordable, very accessible and it does help um, remove makeup really easily too. Personally, I found that the texture could be sometimes a little bit harder to melt in your fingers and personally, I do generally prefer oil cleansers but that is also a very good cleanser. Next, I only have one water-based cleanser. That seems like unbelievable. I feel like I have a lot opened but haven't actually emptied it or loved it absolutely enough to empty it. And is it a surprise that the product that I have emptied is the Revectin Skin Essentials Conditioning Cleanser. This is now an absolute standard in my skincare collection. I always have one. I am halfway through my second bottle for the year and it is just the perfect easy gel cleanser that can be used by any skin type that's free from any um, irritants. So definitely one that I recommend everyone try. Next, I believe we are moving on to toners would be the next step. And is it a surprise that there are many toners on this list? No, it isn't because I freaking love toners. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> I think we have seven toners today. Tony Moly Wanda Ceramide Mochi Toner. So obviously this is a huge jumbo size toner. It is 500 mils and I actually didn't completely um, use it up on my face since I do have such a wide variety of toners to use up but it was still a really nice toner. So it does leave your skin very mochi mochi and hydrated. You can layer it multiple times and it doesn't feel heavy and it really does hydrate from the inside out. It does include ceramides as well which is going to help strengthen your moisture barrier and skin barrier but I ended up using it on my body and really really liked it too. I know a lot of people have liked it and I feel like it is great bang for buck because I think on sale you can get it for like $10 and it is a huge 500 mils. Next I emptied my old school Hadarabo Gokujin lotion. So I'm pretty sure at this point I am known as the Hadarabo um, queen because I always talk about their products. This is their old bottle. I have so many Hadarabo lotions to empty that I just can't possibly do it on one face, but always go back. Oh, I hit my head. The classic is just an easy one to reach for and 
I obviously have many, many videos um, on my love for this one. If you haven't seen any of their videos, um, this is just such an easy, affordable, fuss-free um, hyaluronic acid-based hydrating lotion. There you go. Next, I do have another Japanese toner. It is the Curel Intensive Moisture Care Moisture Lotion. So this one saved my skin when it was feeling really irritated, possibly having sensitivity from hyaluronic acid. I know some people can experience it, and I think I experienced it last year. I feel like it has not happened to me this year, but there were periods where I kind of tried to back off or stop using hyaluronic acid based products and this is a wonderfully hydrating toner that is free from alcohol fragrance and a lot of those irritants and is also hyaluronic acid free. I believe the main ingredient is like glycerin, really simple ingredients but really really hydrating so definitely recommend the whole cure -all range for people who do have sensitive skin. Next I have the Skin 1004 Hyaluseca Brightening Toner. This one was a really nice um, super super gentle exfoliating toner that a lot of people won't even consider it an exfoliating toner but it did have um, small amounts of I believe it was AHA it had some chemical exfoliants that really really gently exfoliate your skin I used it every day morning and night on a cotton pad wiped it on my face and then applied a little bit more to hydrate my skin and I feel like it really really helped smooth my skin texture another toner that I actually find did the same sort of thing is the Cosrx AHA BHA vitamin C daily toner again this this toner has a very small amounts of gentle exfoliating ingredients as well that you can use on the daily and it is Cosrx so probably will be um, more affordable than the Skin 1004 one. If you do want something that's going to daily exfoliate in a really gentle way these kind of toners are perfect for that. I also have a mist toner the Benton Let's Carrot Oil Toner. So this one wasn't actually used up by myself but it was Logan's go-to toner for such a long time that he actually like broke the mister I don't know if you can see but he broke the mister because I guess he was just like enjoying it so much <laughs> using it every day we ended up decanting it in a smaller spray bottle for him to finish off but he has like combo skin compared to me and this one does have an oil layer but he said it was really nice and nourishing but also a hydrating toner that didn't feel overly heavy so he really enjoyed this one and definitely emptied it pretty much all by himself it is 150 mils and then the last toner I guess you could say is the Needly Daily Toner Pad. So obviously this is a toner pad where um, you have these small pads that are soaked in the formula which obviously I'm completely empty. I do have a backup though and it was like my favorite toner pad last year I believe and I finished this one up but again a super super hydrating toner pad. One pad like literally can hydrate your whole face and again can gently exfoliate at the same time. So another one that I really enjoyed. And serums is something that I choose depending on the day what I want to use. So rarely do I use the same serum like every single day for weeks at a time. So it is harder for me to empty serums. First I have... <laughs> Is it a surprise? The number Zen number three serum. I believe I emptied this bottle like really, really early on in the year and I am more than halfway through my second bottle here. I have definitely slowed down on it because I know I love it. I know what it does for my skin and I do still have to try out um, other serums and products, but it is that product that I always want to have around in my skincare routine. It is the number one serum that has helped my skin texture and smoothness. And once again, check those videos out. I can't shut up about this one so absolutely absolute holy grail another serum is the by wish trend polyphenols in propolis 15 percent ample I think I have like one use left in it, but this one is a really easy one to reach for when you want to rehydrate your skin, but also want something that's going to help prevent breakouts or kind of even out that balance in your skin since propolis is so good for fighting bacteria, um, calming your skin, anti-inflammatory, just like so many freaking benefits. It is a wonderful serum that the texture is also a dream. The last serum, which I guess I wouldn't technically categorize it as a serum but the name is first spray serum the dalba first spray serum another product that you guys consistently see 
on my channel. Do I need to say any further? Um, I emptied one. I already have started another one. I have another one. I have a billion backups and I need them all. So an absolute amazing mist that creates this glowy, glowy, beautiful look. All right, we are moving on to moisturizers. First, I have the Hadarabo Gokujun and Hadarabo Shirojun creams. I love these moisturizers. They're super simple, hyaluronic acid based, um, lightweight textured moisturizers that I feel like can literally work for any skin type. These were the two that um, I kind of went through quickly during the summertime. They're a bit more light in texture, but yeah, super affordable, super easy, um, fuss free moisturizers. One that I absolutely cannot live without, the Claire's Midnight Blue Calming Cream. Although I don't use this one every day, it is the one I reach for when my skin is irritated. Um, also after I shave, whenever I need a bit of calming in my life, this is the one I go for. The jar is very small and I emptied it very, very quickly. And I did um, open my backup, which honestly, this one is so light. I feel like We've only got about that much left because Logan has been using this one like non-stop as well. He uses it after shaving and whenever he's feeling irritated. 30 mil plus more than halfway through a 60 mil in half a year. Like we love this stuff, both me and Logan. So definitely a staple that I consistently need in my skincare collection. Speaking of um, products to use after like shaving or when your skin is irritated, I also have the I'm from Mugwort Cream, which I feel like I actually haven't to talked about the cream that much. You guys know I love the Mugwort Essence and I talked about that consistently, but the Mugwort Cream as well is also a beautiful formula. It's a nice cream gel that I feel like oily combo skin would absolutely love and of course has that Mugwort extract that is really calming to the skin. So I actually do really recommend this one, although the texture was like slightly thicker than I expected. So even if you have like normal to dry skin, I actually have a little bit left. It would still be moisturizing enough if you do have normal to dry, but oily and combo people would love it. Next, I have the Chasing Rabbits Green Golden Ruler. Another product that I talked about consistently until I emptied it. And once I emptied it, like, <sighs> sad. Oops, I dropped the lid. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it smells so good. Kind of stopped talking about it, but it is still an absolute dream of a moisturizer that I feel like would work for all skin types. It has matcha as an anti antioxidant probiotics for overall skin health and also um, hemp seed oil, which is very nice and moisturizing. Please someone send me another one because I will definitely use it again. Next, the Skin 1004 Centella Cream. This one is my go-to moisturizer whenever I want a smooth makeup base. That is what I use it for. That is what it's great for. And then the last moisturizer type product is the Revectin Sika Care Balm. Another product that I feel like I actually enjoyed a ton, but just somehow haven't mentioned it on my channel. And it's probably because I don't use it all of the time, but it is such a nice balm to kind of apply a thick layer whenever your skin is irritated. And it has this beautiful texture that just kind of like comforts your skin and kind of cuddles it and kind of seals it up and protects it. I actually recently got my second tip of this so I will start to um, use it once again. I'm going to do some special care products. First we're going to talk about pimple patches. We have the Cosar X Acne Pimple Master Patch. This one is a classic. I feel like it is the most known, most sold, most basic pimple patch and it does the job. For me it is a little bit on the thicker side but again it is usually very very cheap like you can get it for a few dollars and then these two I did enjoy both of them the Sun By Me Clear Spot Patch and the By Wish Trend Clear Skin Shield Patch these are both on the thinner side which I enjoy whenever it's thick I feel like they kind of peel off a lot easier but these ones they are thin so you can wear them during the day and you can wear them for a long time the Sun By Me just comes in one size whereas the By Wish Trend does come in multiple different sizes this is even the old packaging I'm using a new pack of theirs where the actual patches are like ovals just as good and I do like having a variety of different sizes I feel like it can just help depending on the pimple or blemish that you've got pimple patches are definitely a staple and I use them all the time oh my god I don't even know how I'm gonna do this next section it is sheet masks and 
I literally went into my bathroom just before I filmed this video to get this. So out of all of those, the number one sheet mask that I used was the Revectin Lotus Water Calming Sheet Mask. So this one isn't the fanciest sheet mask, but when I just want like a punch of hydration, something for my skin to drink up, this is the one I go for because it's really simple and it is pretty much pure hydration, but it does also help to calm your skin as well. So this is kind of like, I don't want to think about what properties are needed to be a good sheet mask. I just chuck it on when I'm feeling um, parched and I absolutely loved it. Other sheet masks that I had multiples of was again, Revectin, the Dr. Pore mask, I believe is what it's called. I kind of cut off the top of the um, sheet mask there. I did mention this one in my pore care video, which has become my number one most viewed video on my YouTube now, which is kind of random. I literally never expected it, but I mentioned it in that video because it is like a sheet mask that hydrates your skin, but also helps to smooth out those pores, especially on your cheek area. Love it for that little pick me up. Numbers and number three sheet mask. Again, a mask that works wonders in smoothing out your skin and plumping it out. It is a little bit more expensive. So it's something that I would use on like the night before a special occasion. The Revectin Dr. Mask Aqua. This one is great when you want a little extra hydration as well. It's basically the same essence as their um, treatment lotion. The good old green tangerine vita c dark spot serum sheet mask this one is a really nice um brightening light hydrating sheet mask the claire's midnight blue calming sheet mask i mean as i said i love their calming cream and this mask is also a beautiful one it is very hydrating and very calming and i also love the sheet that they use on this one as well it is a bamboo charcoal sheet it's nice. The Pyungangil Calming Mask Pack. To be honest, this one was pretty insignificant to me. I felt like it hydrated a little bit, calmed a little bit, but it wasn't like wow. Neogen Probiotics Relief Mask. This one was very um, nourishing and plumping to the skin from memory. I only used it that one time. I do have a couple multi-pack masks. The Kiana Nadeshko Rice Mask. This one does include a lot of um, rice related ingredients so it really helps to smooth skin texture, hydrate and also brighten the skin. So it is a great um, Japanese sheet mask that I know is already so so popular. And then the last sheet mask is also a Japanese one. The Say Clear Turn Vitamin C Essence Mask. I always buy a couple of these whenever I go back to Japan because you get 30 sheet masks for usually like 600 yen. Even online you can buy it for like under $10 and you get 30 sheet masks. So they're not like the most amazing sheet masks but value for money they are brilliant. A couple of the special care items, the Good Molecules Yerba Mate Wake Up Eye Gel, a beautiful lightweight um, gel eye cream that was Logan's Holy Grail eye cream because he said he can't feel it on his eyes, which is apparently um, the number one thing for him for eye cream. And then also the Manure 4GF Ampoule Eye Cream. This one was nice as well. It was definitely on the thicker side of eye cream. So I guess if you do um, kind of develop milia easily, maybe don't go for this one but if you do have drier mature skin you probably would enjoy this one since it does have collagen and possibly peptides in it from memory and we are going to finish off the skincare realm of things with two sunscreens which are pretty much the same product the Biore UV aqua rich watery essence regular version and also the cool version surprisingly these are the only SPFs I've actually emptied this year because I have <sighs> been trying so many sunscreens this year. I have never tried so many sunscreens in my life. Hence why I will use so many different ones. So I don't actually empty empty them. But of course the Biore, like this is just, it's just so easy to reach for. It is a holy grail. I've repurchased it countless times. And the reason why um, both of these are pretty much empty is because of Logan. Like this is his go-to sunscreen as well. As I said, he doesn't like the feeling of skincare on his skin. So this seems to be the one he reaches for that is just so lightweight, sinks into the skin. If you've tried it, you know what I mean. The texture is just unbelievable and I've mentioned it a thousand times. Super random, but this toothpaste, I don't even know what the brand is. Kobayashi Seiyaku, so it's like a 
pharmaceutical brand, but they're Koshu Kea Sumigaki. It's like a charcoal based um, toothpaste. I got it off Yestal and it just, it's the most enjoyable <laughs> toothpaste to use because it says it's like a light floral scent or something, but it's like grapes. It literally smells and tastes like grapes. Do I need to explain why that is so enjoyable? It's fun. It's like being a kid again, being like, oh yeah, I get to brush my teeth with like candy. So <laughs> I thought I'll throw it in here because I really did enjoy using that one. Let's move on to lip balms. It's kind of that in-between skincare and makeup kind of category. Am I right? I do have a number of lip balms and it is definitely something that I can't live without. These are all the ones that I could find. I know I've definitely emptied more this year. A definite holy grail is the Nivea Deep Moisture Honey Flavor Lip Balm. I love this lip balm and I have been obsessed since I was living in Japan because one of my co-workers used this one like consistently. So one day I was like, finally, I'm going to buy it. And then I was like, okay, no wonder she uses it all the time. I know it is harder to find online. I don't know for some reason, like no one stocks it. So if you live in Japan, lucky you get these. Other than that, I know they can be a little bit hard to find online. Hence why I would recommend these ones, the DHC Lip Cream. This is also my mom's holy grail. It's like pretty much the only lip balm she uses and has been using for years and years on end. I would say it is the lip balm I use when I need actual like repairing of my lips. So when it's like cracking, flaking, this is the one that I use to kind of repair it because it's not as glossy. It's not as like moisturizing feeling on the lips, but it really does heal your lips. And then lastly, the Melty Cream Lip. I've got it in matcha and milk vanilla here. I love these lip balms. They have such a nice kind of glossy texture to them, but are still really moisturizing. And they also come in so many different flavors. They often do like limited edition ones and mm, they're so good. The matcha one is super nice. I have like the tiniest little bit left but it's so hard to find them now. Yes I used to stock them all the time but I feel like now they often only have like the unscented or only certain ones but if you can get the matcha the matcha one's great. They also have a honey one which is great. It's all just like the scent is different. That's pretty much it between them. They also do have SPF I think 22 two or 24. So if you're looking for a SPF lip balm, these ones are great as well and very affordable if you do buy them in Japan. Okay, now lastly, we have makeup. We're going to try to speed through this. I have the Moonshot Micro Glossy Fit Cushion. Now this is the actual cushion, but I actually have gone through two refills and this is my third one. I absolutely love this cushion. It is my favorite cushion ever. And I mentioned it in my last video, Glowy Base video, and found out that they're actually like renewing all of their products or all of their cushions at least. So yeah, it kind of sucks because I mentioned it and then like now no one can get it online. So I'm really sorry about that. But there is no other cushion that I love quite as much as this one. So I'm a in a bit of a rut. Hopefully this lasts me until they release the new one, but apparently that is the situation with the Moonshot cushions. I just love this one because it has the perfect amount of coverage and gives that really nice glowy finish on the skin too. Another product that I have many multiples of empties is the Hero and Make Long and Curl Mascara Advanced Film. It has absolutely become my holy grail mascara this year. And personally, I do like using the brown. This is the brown shade. It does come in a black. And it is the most um, long-lasting, waterproof, um, lengthening, eye-opening mascara, especially if you do have short, thin lashes like me. You will appreciate this so much. It really keeps your lashes up. It lengthens them and just makes them look beautiful. One thing is that it is really really hard to remove. So I 1000% recommend using the Hero Make Mascara Remover or the Bifesta Eye and Lip Makeup Remover. I feel like they're the only things that actually remove it well and easily, but my number one used mascara this year for sure. Another product that honestly, it looks absolutely filthy here, but the Essence Lash and Brow Gel Mascara. So I've said it before, but I'm really super not fussy with brow products. And this is pretty much the only mascara gel that I've been using for the 
last few years. They sell it at like my local pharmacy for $5, I think, or less. So it's super cheap and does the job. It is literally just a clear mascara and you can see how like this is one that I emptied a long time ago. But this is the current one I've got and obviously I need to get rid of it because I do it on top of my brow pencil. It always like carries the brow pencil back into the container. So yeah, that's kind of gross. I have already bought a backup. I don't quite know where I put it. It's just a clear gel. It's so cheap and that's all I need. Like my brows don't really move that much anyway. So this has been my go-to brow gel for God knows how long now. Talking about brows, I have a number of brow pencils. First, the Rom and Hun All Sharp Brow. As I said, I'm not fussy, so I used it up, but I do find it's a little too thin maybe. The sharpness is good, but I do feel like I have to use quite a bit or kind of spend a fair amount of time to apply it because it is so thin although I do like the thin spoolie the spoolie is super thin which is nice but yeah I probably wouldn't buy it again but it was fine a nice pencil the other two I have is the is this is this it? Did I mean to include this? Oh, this one's not empty yet. Never mind. <laughs> the other one I emptied was the Some Art Look Eyebrow in number three, shade Cure Brown. Grey Brown, I believe, is the shade. I did really like the um, shape of the pencil. It's a bit wider and on a angle, and I found that I could really quickly apply it, and I liked the colour because it wasn't too dark or it wasn't too red. It was that gray brown and I believe I have already repurchased it. I think I grabbed another one because it was like three or four dollars on Yesta. Like how can you complain for a brow pencil that works fine for three or four dollars? So the someone I love a lot of their makeup products and they're just so damn affordable. And then lastly, I do have two liquid eyeliners because they are pretty much a staple in my makeup routine. The Motte Liner Black from, I think the brand name is called Flow Fushi. This one I am a little upset about. I had really high hopes and they were promoting it like crazy and everyone was like, oh my God, it's so good, blah, blah, blah. But I felt like it just, it wasn't that good. It was a really strong black, which was nice, but I felt like it ran out so quick. Like I felt like I got barely a month of good use and then after that I had to really like shake it all, like kind of flick it to get the ink out. So I wasn't that impressed in how long it lasted. This eyeliner is the Hidoin Make Smooth Liquid Liner. This one is just in the shade black. This is a good liquid liner. Like their mascara, it is one of my holy grails and this one has lasted months and months and months and still had a really nice sharp edge to it until the very end. This one is a brush tip, goes on so thin. Um, obviously I can't really show it because it is out of ink, but it goes on very thin, very flexible. I mean, you can still kind of see it. That's like impressive for it being empty for so long. The color is nice, bold, lasts a long time, and yeah, literally no complaints about it, and it is definitely more affordable than the Flow Pushy Mote Liner. So this is a brilliant liquid liner. All right, you guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this mess of a video. I don't even know how many products I mentioned. I do have to wrap this up quickly though, because my battery. Literally, as I said the word battery, my battery ran out. I guess now I can take my time because I switched my battery. <laughs> I must apologize for how much of a train wreck and um, messy this video was, but I hope there was something that intrigued you. And as I said, I will leave links in the description to videos where I talked about the products in depth. So make sure you check it out if there was anything you were truly curious about. And if you did like this video, make sure you check out another one of my videos that I have selected for you because I'm sure you'll enjoy that one too. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Mwah.